when you're into boot collecting, it's very important that you have soul. You like that? <laughs> How are you going? Welcome back to Bootlosophy and if you're new here, uh, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I'm filming on, the Wajit people. Now, if you're into boot collecting uh, and you're starting afresh or perhaps you're into one type of boot and you want to expand into another, uh, I, I think it's important that you actually start to understand how boots are constructed which is why I try and give you in all my deep review videos uh, the form of construction and how each layer is put together. And quite clearly, one of the important uh, materials that's used in the making of your boot is the actual sole. So I think it's probably time for me to do a video on the different types of soles and uh, what they're best used for. So let's start. And as a start, we should probably start by looking at uh, the most natural sole of all. So the most uh, natural sole is, of course, the leather sole. Now, this is usually now veg tan leather because veg tan is tougher. And it's usually quite thick if you're using it as an outsole. Um, and in this case, this is the Grantstone diesel boot. Uh, you can see that this has been roughed up, which is one of the disadvantages of having a leather sole in that uh, when you first wear it, it is as slippery as hell, particularly as bootmakers try and protect the soles by waxing them. Thank you. Um, so when you first get them, you have to be really quite careful wearing them. And it's only after uh, you've worn it for a while, like, like these, you can see it's really been scruffed up. And, and really, um, then that starts to give you grip. What are the advantages of a leather sole? It's more breathable. If you slap a piece of uh, rubber under your feet, you, you will stop moisture and, and breathability going through the underside of your feet, whereas leather is a natural material, it breathes, etc., etc. Um, it's also meant to be flexible because as, a, as a, uh, a leather natural material, it flexes a lot more easily. Rubber is elastic, but what, it, what this does is when it flexes, all the fibers loosen and tighten in the right areas. Whereas rubber, being an elastic, is just one density. They kind of look ugly when they're scuffed up, but it's kind of a requirement so that you're not slipping all over the place. Although, in some cases, like on this Oak Street Bootmaker's uh, trench boot, their leather sole is, is oil-infused. And by that, uh, when they tan that, that piece of um, Ben's leather for the sole, they will infuse oil into it so that uh, the molecules are packed with oils in it. A, that makes it a little bit more waterproof, and B, that does make it a little grippier. It does actually feel, when it comes fresh, even before it's got scuffed, that it is a little grippier than a normal, untreated leather sole. You can actually get to this, uh, even with this, and I've actually, if you were here, you could smell it. I've treated this with a uh, a layer, a couple of couple of paintings of sole oil. You can buy them in, in different uh, brands, but they're uh, oil composed specifically to soak into leather soles, uh, make them as oil infused as in the factory, maybe not so much, but gives them that uh, waterproofness and also grip. So um, those are leather soles. Now, here's one that is often sometimes mistaken for leather. This is the Alden Indie boot. Um, and they use what looks like leather in the first instance, but this is actually rubber infused with cork and with other sticky chemicals. So this is a neoprene cork sole. And for all intents and purposes, it's smooth like a leather sole, it scuffs like a leather sole, and in this dark area, it almost looks like leather. Uh, the, the neoprene cork sole gives you a flat profile, just like leather, so it therefore looks quite dressy, as you can see. There's no lugs and you know things sticking out. Now, uh, this is an RM Williams Craftsman, not the comfort craftsman with the rubber sole. This originally came with a leather sole, but I've put what's called a rubber toppy on it, T-O-P-Y. Now, when this came with a leather sole, I wore it just like I wore these. Uh, I've had these for 20 years now, 
and they were starting to wear a patch in the middle. They hadn't quite gone through. And I realized that if I wasn't careful, I'd wear them another year or so and then I'd have to recraft. So I took them to my uh, cobbler and I asked them to put a rubber toppy on. It's a very thin piece of rubber that you can hardly see on the edge. But what it does is it protects the leather uh, and once, once I wear that down and back into the leather, I'll then send this into RM Williams to recraft. So uh, this does, what this does is give you the advantage of the flexibility because it's still sort of only a half a sole. Uh, and you have to be careful about uh, uh, conditioning and waxing this as well. So that's your half and half. Okay, let's go to the next category. And the next category is rubber soled boots. Um, all this is, is just rubber. Probably the most popular type of compound that's used for boots, uh, even more so than leather soles. In the case of this RM Williams Rickaby, they have a proprietary rubber uh, outsole that has uh, markings to give you better grip and so on. The rubber can have different compositions. The advantages of rubber, quite clearly, is that it gives you reasonably good shock absorption, it gives you a pretty good grip, uh, and you can mold it in any way to affect the type of use that you might want to use the boot for. In molding it this way, RM Williams creates a boot that's reasonably uh, dressy. You know, again, you haven't got lugs sticking out and all sorts of things like that, and it's quite low profile. So a typical rubber boot. It comes in all different shapes and sizes. This is the Vibram uh, V700 rubber, rubber sole, uh, called a V-bar, as you can see clearly why. This is the uh, NYX Parkhurst collaboration boot. So the V-bar is similarly, similarly um, crafted in the sense that it is a, a solid piece of rubber all the way through uh, with its different type of grip that you can, you can put on. Another type of uh, rubber sole is the crepe rubber sole. Uh, as you can see in this Estor Flex Bit Flex Chelsea boot um, available from Huckbury. Uh, the most famous use of this is, of course, the Clark's Desert boot. Now, uh, crepe rubber is actually raw rubber. It's rubber that comes straight off rubber trees. It's run through a crepier, that's a French word for squashing things. And it comes out in sheets like this, which are then taken off to factories. They get chipped and made into vulcanized rubber, like, like in those boots. In this case, it's really raw rubber, cut in sheets. They cut it out into soles. When it first comes out, it looks like that. Within seconds, <laughs> it looks like that. The advantage is it's very flexible. It's very grippy. Uh, so grippy, in fact, that it'll pick up hair and dirt and sand and all kinds of crap very, very quickly. I'm going to have to wash my hands after this. Um, but what it also is, is also very shock absorbing, absorbing and very soft. Disadvantage, it wears away really quickly. Uh, over time, your toes will wear away, your heels will wear away, and uh, you're just gonna have to rip the whole thing off and start again. Uh, not fantastic in the wet. It's grippy in dry and slightly uh, uh, moist uh, concrete, but it's not fantastic in the wet because once it's worn, all that grease and stuff, I think kind of reacts with slickness and it can be quite slippery. Here's a variation. Now this is not rubber, but it looks like rubber. This is uh, a polymer, TPU and PU, polyu polyurethane. Uh, it has, on different mixtures, either a firmness, so that it uh, is more durable, or a softness, which is uh, shock absorbing. Now TPU is more often than not a cement construction boot. These are a pair of blundstones, everybody knows them. And what happens with these is they're a little bit better than cement construction. They're actually uh, heat molded onto the boot. In the factory, a, a molten piece of PU is sort of tubed onto a mold, squashed in, and then as it cools, it sticks to the boot. So um, remarkably waterproof, as long as the leather itself is waterproof, because there are no stitches, basically. Okay, so let's go to the next category. This category is probably one that you've certainly heard of, the Commando outsole. Uh, now, this is a Vibram version. There is some dispute as to who invented the Commando outsole. The Commando, you can recognize by having these radiating lugs on the outside uh, and star-shaped lugs on the inside, similar to the, to the heel. 
Uh, it's said that Vibram invented this when Victor Brahmani's uh, friends died in a mountain accident and he vowed to create a, a boot and sole uh, that was uh, better equipped to go mountaineering in. On the other hand, that was in the 1930s. On the other hand, it's also said that Its Hide, uh, a UK company, was the first to create commando lug soles for Royal Marine Commandos during the war. I suspect that the Axis powers in Italy would not have allowed collaboration with a UK manufacturer. So what the truth of it is, is I'm not sure yet. I'm still researching it. There's a lot of articles about how uh, Its Hide invented the commando sole for grip and quietness. But there's also enough uh, articles about how uh, Vibram invented it for mountaineering, except that in those days it was called the Karamato sole. So I'm not sure whether that refers to the patterns or to the compound. And perhaps the truth is somewhere in the middle, uh, they started using that compound for all of this pattern. Anyway, the commander sole, as you can see, is uh, heavily lugged. It's not exactly a form of boot if you see from the side. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering, this is a, an Indonesian Fortis Boots uh, handmade boot. Uh, their service boot in the Dakar last. Beautiful boot. Um, so, as you can see, it's not going to be low profile, you know, wear with a suit. It's clearly an outdoorsy, uh, let's go hiking kind of, kind of sole. Uh, advantages. It's great in soft ground. It's great in sand, in mud, and so on. Uh, depending on the composition, and in this case, it's quite a hard V100, v v V100 compound, it can be slippery. On wet, slick concrete, it can be quite slippery. Fantastic for the soft uh, undergrowth stuff. Um, and as you can see, it does take some skill to stitch through this boot. Typical to the Indonesian craftsmanship, they take care in going up the hill, down the valley, and so that you cannot see any stitches hanging in mid-air, which you can see in other uh, 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 faster-made boots without the sort of care of, uh, into the, into the uh, construction. Now, to avoid this, People often use this type of commando sole. As you can see, the same type of lugs, same type of pattern. This is a Parkhurst uh, Delaware boot, by the way. Um, but what they've done is they've inboarded the lugs so that they don't come right out to the, to the edge. And guess what? It's a lot easier to stitch then because you're stitching on a flat rubber piece. Exactly the same kind of uh, advantages and the same kind of disadvantages as well. And um, as you can see from one of these, well you can't see from these, but they do have them in some of mine, they pick up a lot of gravel and dirt and you kind of have to pick them up. Another great disadvantage. Uh, going along the same sort of formula, but making it, oh by the way, as you can see, even when it's inboard, because it's inboard, it's hard to see the lugs when you compare these two so that this inboard type of commander sole can be used for a dressier version. And, and often when you're looking down on your boot at that angle, or when somebody else is looking at your boot, they don't actually see that it's got commando lugs underneath. So a variation of that is the Vibram 430 mini lug sole. Mini lug should give you a clue. Look, exactly the same pattern, radiating, stars, but again, it's inboard and it's very, very low. I don't know if I can get you the right angle. So what this does, it gives you the same amount of grippiness. Uh, this is a good 50-50 between uh, hard surfaces and soft surfaces. And it gives you a boot that, in theory, you could go to work in and then brush off and uh, go out to the pub in. So that's the 430 mini lug sole. There are variations. Vibram uh, make this one called a honey lug sole. This is the White's Fulton uh, work boot. The honey lug sole is exactly the same, but it's honey colored. <laughs> but not only is it honey colored to suit the type of uppers, so there's a fashion choice, I guess, but also that it has a slightly softer compound so that um, it is a little grippier on uh, the plain, slick kind of concrete uh, surfaces. So it has a slight variation for that sense. Now. A total combination of everything is this one. Again, this is the uh, RM Williams Urban Turnout. 
They use a Vibram sole, it's colored, but this is an extremely soft compound. This is very shock absorbing, and in fact you can see like almost pocket cells of air in the heel. Uh, so you can see a whole variation across of exactly the same tread pattern, but using different um, uh, compounds. They can be harder or softer, grippier in, in uh, slick stuff, grippier in soft mud, uh, and also uh, through how you space the lugs can either look quite um, work booty casually or quite formal. All right, so let's go to the next category. This is the most popular rubber sole that you can find out there. Uh, almost every bootmaker, in fact, I dare say every bootmaker in the world will have a version of this, even if they make it a proprietary model that they uh, use themselves. This is the studded outsole, uh, originally made by Daynite, D-A-I-N-I-T-E, so-called because when they started their factory, this is the Harbour Rubber Company in England, their mills, which is the old English uh, term for factories from the Industrial Revolution, their mills ran uh, day and night. So they became known as the Daynite uh, rubber outsole. As you can see, they have uh, little rubber studs right across the sole. The studs, when they're not worn, as these are, stick out a little higher, uh, proud of the actual surface of the rubber. And they have little rings around them uh, to be able to knock off dirt as you uh, come indoors. So this is a, a perfect uh, indoor-outdoor and very comfortable rubber outsole. Uh, day night, as I've said, is uh, copied, I suppose you'd say, by various bootmakers to make their proprietary insoles. Thursday uses them, uh, Grant Stone uses them. Uh, Parkers currently have a, have a Spanish sort of made uh, version of these as well. Now the same company that makes this, Harbour, also make a version called Ridgeway. Now this is not a Ridgeway sole. You can see by the yellow symbol, it's a, it's a Vibram sole. This is a Caswell boot, by the way. Um, the Ridgeway sole has these sort of ridges on it. And the Ridgeway sole, by the Ridgeway brand, owned by the Harbour Rubber Company, uh, is also copied by various other makers, including Vibram. Uh, Ridgeway is called Ridgeway because when they sort of invented these long ridges, apparently tailored them after the Ridgeway walk in England. But I find these very comfortable. Uh, I find the original Ridgeways very grippy because they're a little bit um, more proud than these are on the Vibrams. Uh, and I find them very grippy on all kinds of surfaces. I think the Ridgeway is probably one of my favorite outsoles. They also do tend to be inboard. So again, when they're flat on the floor, uh, you, it's looking like quite a dressy boot and it's not sort of commando lugged. Very nice. Okay, on to the next category. This next category is all about hybrids. So we've seen leather soles. We've seen leather soles with a very thin toppy on it. We've seen rubber soles. Uh, this category is the half sole, and I think in this particular case, the lugged half sole. This is an MP Sherman boot. Uh, it, it's you know one of my favorite boots. It is my grail boot if you go and watch my original video. Uh, and what this is, is it has, look, you recognize that radiating lugs and those star-shaped lugs? This is obviously a commando sole, but it's a commando half sole. So they put it on a leather outsole, but instead of leaving it as leather, they put on a half sole. What's the difference between this and a toppy? It's a lot thicker. A toppy is basically just a protective layer. This is part of the design. It gives you a good grip. This is a Rochia compound made by Vibram. Uh, the old RM Williams Beckman used to have a Rochia sole, and some uh, boots I think have a Rochia compound full commando sole but it's a slightly softer compound and I find the grip on this magnificent. This is really superb. It's also, being a half sole, theoretically able to flex more. <clears throat> Not in whites. <laughs> because of white's construction, there are so many layers of leather, including leather shanks and leather built up pieces in the arch and everything. Um, it, yeah, it's, it's a theory. It's a theory that it flexes more. I need to go to the gym. Uh, but what it is, is extremely, uh, extremely uh, grippy, very shock absorbing because it's quite a nice uh, 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 
rubberiness, but it could wear off a little bit faster. And as you can see from this, you know, whites doesn't exactly take care in sort of stitching it on. Uh, not that it matters, it's glued on. Another advantage is, of course, once you wear this out, you don't have to resole the entire boot. You just uh, basically resole this layer of rubber, which sort of helps with the price of your repairs. So that's the commando half, uh, uh, commando lugged half sole. Here's a different version. That's also obviously a half sole. It's also obviously not just a protective layer. It's quite a thick part of the construction, a deliberate part of the construction. This is a Dr. Sole half sole. Uh, it's rubber. You can get these with cork infused rubber, like, like a cork neoprene, like you saw in the Aldens. And to my mind, it is also quite grippy, again, because of the compound and the, the way the rubber is made. And these little cups, I think, just give you a little bit of um, stability and sturdiness as you, as you pop in. And as you can see, uh, without it, it would have been a leather sole. Uh, not a particularly thick one, but it's still about three or four, you know, uh, four millimeters at least thick. But what they then do is they put this four, five millimeter thick Dr. Sole half sole. Again, leaving the uh, leather free. So again, making sure that you're conditioning that. And in this case, you can see that it is definitely flexible. So that's the advantage of it. Okay, next category. And this is the final category that I've got for you. You'll recognize these, the wedge sole. So the most famous one, of course, is on this Red Wing 875 mock toe. It's the Vibram Christie wedge sole, even though this has a Red Wing label on it. Uh, and you can recognize it because of that white sort of uh, uh, wedge color and also because of this sort of wavy v-shaped um, tread on it very um, popular with tradespeople because you can work outside in sandy muddy conditions and then you bring whatever you've worked on indoors and all you you're not sort of bringing in rocks and gravel and all sorts of things it's extremely comfortable some people will call it a crepe rubber sole. Not true. You saw what crepe was. That's raw rubber. Uh, it is processed rubber. It's not crepe. I find this Christie actually quite uh, grippy. And it's also very comfortable because it is a flat slab of rubber that you, your whole foot stands on. Clearly a favorite. There is a variation, again made by Vibram. This is called the 2021 uh, wedge sole. Uh, you'll see that the pattern is different quite clearly, but that's not the only difference. It's a way softer compound. So I find this, with all the advantages of a, of a wedge sole, even more comfortable and more shock absorbing. I, I think it's really, really fantastic on any kind of surface. And I've worn this everywhere. I've worn this hiking. I've worn this um, going out to casual events and uh, not found it slippery at all. But there are also hybrids, and this is a proprietary one. Uh, I suspect made in Mexico. This is a Dievier. Uh, Nomad generation 2 and you can see that they have their own kind of totally different tread on it uh, Quite similar to a Vibram Gloxy cut which is deep cut patterns in it And the reason for that is it it makes it a lot more flexible uh, Because it bends Where the, the difference in the two treads bend I just wanted to show you this because wedge soles can come in different colors obviously and they can come in different treads and different rubber compounds so that's it, let's sum up. So as I started saying at the very beginning, uh, when you're starting to collect boots, I think it's really useful, if not interesting at least, that you figure out how boots are designed and constructed, which is why I give you so much detail about the construction of each of the boots that I bring to you. And I think the sole uh, choice is a very important part of boot design. It's sort of finishes off the look if you like you know you can design the uppers of the boot and it might be elegant and uh, you know beautifully proportioned quarters and then you slab on a really ugly sole it's not going to work at the same time you need to be appropriately shod underfoot for what you're doing so you don't want a leather sole stuck onto a work boot uh, going out into a slippery web uh, and slippery work site um, so i hope you liked it if you did, you know what to do. Click on like below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, do me a favor because it really helps my channel. Subscribe. Since you come back anyway, you know, half of you come back and watch my videos without subscribing. How dare you? <laughs> Go on, subscribe. Take care now and I'll see you soon.